This is Lars Christensen of Census. In this presentation, I will go through the Census Access Service and explain how it can be used to convert documents into a variety of different alternate formats. The Census Access Service is a self-service solution intended for students, faculty, alumni and others with special needs who need to be able to convert documents into various alternate formats. We have support for five main conversions inside of the service. First of all, we can use a service to produce MP3 files out of text documents. That means that you can upload your documents and have them converted into an MP3 file that can then be played back on an MP3 player on a computer or on another device. The MP3 format is great because it plays on virtually anything and it's less great uh, because it can be very difficult to orientate yourself and to navigate within uh, an MP3 file. For that reason, we also support production of documents, audiobooks in uh, the DAISY format. Uh, the DAISY format is a structured audio uh, book format where you have the text, you have the audio, those two things are synchronized, and you also have all the different navigational features that you need in order to be able to navigate and orientate yourself. So a table of content, uh, you have headings, you have a concept of pages, you can put in bookmarks and so on. Thirdly, you can use a service to produce ebooks, convert documents into one of the two popular ebook formats. So you can use a service to convert documents into either EPUB for the iOS devices, Android devices, and other devices, or you can convert them into Mobi Pocket for users with Kindle devices. Then the fourth workflow uh, is the ability to convert documents into digital Braille books. Those digital Braille books can then subsequently be embossed on a Braille embosser or they can be displayed on a Braille display. And then lastly, we have a set of uh, accessibility conversion options that allows users to convert inaccessible or tricky document formats into more accessible or less tricky documents. And to give you some examples, an inaccessible, inaccessible document could be an image-only PDF file uh, that can be tricky to use by somebody with a visual impairment or reading impairment. You can use a service to convert that into a Word document, into a text file. It could also be a PowerPoint presentation, which is difficult to use by a screen reader user, a blind person with a screen reader. You can then use a service to convert a PowerPoint into a web project, into an accessible PDF document, or into an RTF outline. These services are available in a multitude of different languages. We have support for all the main European languages, some of the smaller European languages. We also have support for American English, for Latin American Spanish, for Russian, for Arabic, and for a few other languages. So reasons why you want to consider a service like Census Access is, of course, at the top level, because you want to support independence and self-sufficiency amongst those with special needs in order to promote inclusion in mainstream education and inclusion uh, in vocation. So that's the high level. What it really boils down to is availability. This is an automated service where you don't need to book time in advance. And that means that you can simply have documents converted whenever the need arises. Uh, furthermore, uh, you can provide the same levels of privacy to those with special needs as everybody else is enjoying. Just because you have special needs doesn't necessarily need mean that you want to share whatever you're reading with somebody else. You can use the service to provide multiple different formats and chances are that students, in some cases, they'll prefer to have an MP3 file. In other cases, they may want to have uh, a DAISY document or a Braille book, depending on the situation that they're in. Uh, continued support is the ability to provide uh, support to students once they graduate and uh, go on into further education or they go into uh, a job situation. Uh, so this is also the ability to provide accessibility support to alumni. And then lastly, uh, this is the opportunity to provide accessibility support in online learning environments if you are providing uh, blended learning, if you are offering MOOCs or other online educational uh, options, then uh, using Census Access is a way of providing accessibility support to students that are coming in through those channels. Our users, if we look at them, they are divided into what we call our primary users. Those will be the ones with special needs, the blind, the partially sighted, those with a reading impairment, uh, with a learning disorder or other disorders. Then there's the gray area, as we call it. Those would be students or others. Uh, who do not necessarily qualify into the official programs or who do not want to qualify into the official programs because they don't want to be branded as somebody with a disability. Then we're seeing mainstream students are using the service. It could be students 
foreign students coming in with uh, poor language skills, for instance, poor English skills, uh, and they may need some kind of uh, reading support or language support in the beginning. It could be students who want to experiment with different learning styles uh, to see whether they become more efficient learners when they listen to the text at the same time as they're reading with their eyes. It could be foreign language students who want to get the right pronunciation of out of something in, in a foreign language that could be a text in French or text in German. And then, obviously, other users, alternate media professionals, faculty members, professionals and others are using the service. Inside of uh, the service, you will find a collection of some well-known technology. Unfortunately, there's no magic inside of the service, but you'll find a selection of text-to-speech engines, the best ones that we could lay our hands on. You'll find text-to-braille uh, converters, our own converters in combination with other text-to-braille converters. You will find uh, a number of open source components for ebook conversion, basic conversion. You will find plain office automation components from Microsoft and others uh, that we're using to convert the office type documents. And you will find uh, a rather large OCR engine, the best one that we could find uh, for doing all this image processing and conversion of uh, image type documents into more accessible document types. On the left-hand side of the slide, you can see a list of the different supported document types, Word documents, PowerPoints, HTML files, text files of, uh, of various sorts, RTF files, all sorts of different PDF documents ranging from the image-only PDFs to the text-only PDFs to the fully accessible tagged PDFs or, or code-coded PDF files. The only limitation uh, you will find in terms of PDF is that we don't support conversion of PDF files that have been protected with a password. But apart from that, you can submit all uh, other types of documents into the service. Then you can use the service to convert mobile files and EPUB files to the other. Uh, and you can use the service to convert all sorts of different image type documents, TIFF files, GIF files, bitmaps, JPEGs, and so on, into more accessible formats. At the bottom, you can see a list of the different supported languages. But like I already said, all the main European languages, some of the smaller ones, American English, Latin American Spanish, and a few more languages beyond that. Uh, on the right-hand side of the slide, you can see the different supported output formats, but I already went through that. This is the main interface to the service. Uh, it's a web form that's intended to be customized uh, and put on the web page of an academic institution. So we'll customize it. We'll make sure that it uses the same colors, the same fonts, the same sizes, and that it has the, uh, the components that each organization want to have on it. At the top, you can see that there's a banner of uh, flags. I think I'll just uh, switch to the, the online form instead of using this one. So I'll switch to my browser now. It's going to make it slightly easier to demonstrate. At the top, you'll see different flags. The, uh, the flag banner is used to select between the user interface languages of the service. They don't really impact uh, the functionality of the service, they only impact the defaults of the form and also, of course, the interface language itself. I'm just going to leave it at American English. If you don't want the banner of flags, you can simply say uh, remove it and then uh, we'll just uh, default it to American English. Um, there are three ways of getting information into the service. Either you upload a file, this is by far the most popular way of using the service, or you could point to a URL to a document that already sits on the internet uh, or on an intranet or you could uh, just paste in some text directly into the service. If you want to convert uh, some text you find on a web page into uh, an MP3 file, into a Braille document, this is a very fast and convenient way of doing that. I think I'll just leave it at, uh, at, at file uploads and use that for the demonstration. Then you need to go through four steps in order to convert documents. First of all, you need to upload your document. Uh, I'll just uh, browse my file system and I'll locate a file, upload it. This file was called document with math contents.docx. So we are assuming that this is a Word document in the docx format. Uh, in step two, since this is a docx file, we then get presented with those output formats that are available for docx files. In this case, we can see we can convert it into an MP3 audio file, into a DAISY full text full audio file, uh, either without math or with math. We're using two different workflows. That's why we have two different options here. Uh, you can convert it into digital braille into an ebook or you can do an accessibility conversion, convert the document into another document type. For the sake of the demonstration here, I'll just convert it into an MP3 audio file. In step three, I can then select amongst the various options. We're using the American English interface, so uh, the form assumes that the document is in American English, but it may be that I know differently. It may be that I know that the document is in French or that the document uh, is in, 
in German, or it may even be that the document is in Russian. It might also be that I know that the document is in English, but uh, that I prefer, God forbid, to have it read out with a British English voice instead of an American English voice. And in that case, I can select the British English voice. I think I'll just leave it at, uh, at American English. This is also where I can set the speed of the audio ranging from the very fastest to the very slowest. Some visually impaired users, some blind users, partially sighted users, they prefer to increase the speed of the audio, whereas people with a reading disorder or a learning disorder, they frequently like to turn down the speed slightly. So, and then the last thing I need to do is simply to type in the email address where I want the result delivered and press the submit button. I then get a receipt with a few details and instructions that the result will be delivered to me in my email box. So let me go back and do a different conversion. This time I will upload um, a fairy tale by Hans Christian Andersen, The Princess and the Pea in PDF format. Uh, in step two we can see that the two daisy options are not presented anymore. We try to limit uh, user mistakes this way by only presenting the, uh, the output formats that are available and the conversion formats are available for particular document formats. I'll then select the accessibility conversion option and we can see now in step three that we don't, instead of having all these different language options, we then get presented with a list of different document output formats. So this is where I can select to have it converted to a Word document, uh, either in doc or docx file, an RTF file. I can convert it into an accessible PDF document in tag PDF format. If it's something in rows and columns, maybe something from, from the bank or from the tax authorities, I can convert it into a spreadsheet, into a comma-separated file, or into a plain text file without any formatting at all. I'll just leave it at the uh, at doc, uh, and then again, just key in my email address, like this. Let me go back and do one final conversion. Uh, in this case, I'll just upload the same document as before, this Word document, uh, and then I'll select the ebook option. In step three, uh, I now get the opportunity to select between either EPUB, the old EPUB format, the new EPUB format, uh, which is uh, much more capable. It also supports uh, complex objects like math, like animations, and so on. Or I can select to have it converted into Moby Pocket if the uh, target device is going to be a Kindle device. I think I'll just leave it at, uh, at EPUB. What I can also do here is that I can move the baseline in order to support people with low vision. Even though ebook readers, they do support scaling, they rarely support scaling enough to support those with uh, a significant visual impairment. So this is where I can move the baseline of the document to say 16 points, 24 points or 40 points. And then the ebook readers, the commercial ebook readers will actually start from this point and then they will scale upwards. And suddenly you can use standard commercial ebook readers, standard uh, ebooks, uh, just in a way that are available and accessible for those with, uh, with partial sight. The last thing I need to do is uh, to key in my email address and hit submit. So let me go back to the, um, to the presentation and uh, show you a few of the output formats that, uh, that then comes out. So what I have here is uh, actually the document that I just submitted. This is a Word document with some math content. It's uh, an explanation of the quadratic formula. Uh, and we can see that it contains some, uh, some document headers. It contains some body text and it contains some equations. These equations have been typed in using an equation editor. So these are not pictures uh, of equations and they are not uh, simply typed in using the keyboard, but created using a proper uh, equation editor. Then the document was submitted using the web interface and what comes back from the service uh, is uh, if you decide to have it converted into a structured audiobook in DAISY format is uh, something like this. So I'm now in the same document as before just in, uh, in a DAISY reader where you can see we have the same, we have the same uh, headings, we have the same body text, we have the same equations. So let me just play back uh, a bit of this. Root over 2a and fraction 
This formula can then be used to solve any quadratic equation without having to complete the square each time. Okay, I think you get the point for this. So you, you can see uh, what is actually possible uh, to convert automatically. Also, you get an idea of the quality of the different voices found inside of the census access service. Let me go back to my presentation. Uh, this is uh, to show you another output format. In this case, it's uh, an EPUB uh, in the EPUB format just opened on an iPad in iBooks. And what you can see is uh, that if you have the documents in, uh, in the ebook format, then suddenly you have them in a format that can be reflown and where you can change the appearance of the document. You can change the font face, the background colors, the foreground colors, the line spacing, the brightness, the contrast of the way that the document is being presented. And suddenly you have a platform that can be used and tailored for individual uh, preferences for those with a vision impairment, but also for people with a reading impairment or a learning disorder. Um, I said uh, before when I showed the uh, the standard interface that the intention is to to tailor and customize the form so that it fits on the page. And I'm just going, just going to show you a few examples of how other academic institutions have had the form tailored and how they have presented it and provided. Uh, some context for the form as well. So this is the implementation at Stanford University where you can see that they have put in uh, a legal disclaimer uh, and also they have put in some, uh, some best practice information, how best to prepare your documents in order to get the best results out of the conversion. This is uh, another example of an implementation where the form has been adapted to the design guideline at uh, UC Berkeley. Um, and here you can see how it has been adapted to the design of uh, Duke University. And finally, an example from uh, Vassar uh, College, where you can also see that uh, one of the things that they have decided to do is to embed a small promotional video that is used to promote the use of the service among students and others uh, on campus. Uh, it's a free available resource. So let me go back to the presentation. So um, another important resource that you may want to visit is the censusaccess.com website. What you can do on the censusaccess.com website uh, is, uh, first of all, that you can use the, uh, the site to test a few examples of, uh, of own documents. If you want to see how the service uh, behaves when you submit your own documents, you can go to the Convert a File tab and you can upload your own documents. It's a fully functioning implementation of the web form that you will find here. Another important part of uh, the website is the resources part where you will find questions and answers. You will find guides and best practices that uh, are available to use if you sign up to use the service. These uh, resources will be available for you for local implementation with your site. You will find uh, copies of presentations, you will find academic papers that we have uh, prepared, you will find videos, this promotional video I showed before, uh, but also instructional videos of how to do various conversions using the service you can find in this section.